I took the peptide Mot C every day for a month, and here's what happened. So if you have followed this story along, my history is a long one, and actually I haven't gone into it in full detail, but fundamentally I have a very aggressively suppressed metabolism from years of carnivore, keto, restriction, endurance cycling, and not eating enough, fundamentally, or maybe eating the wrong foods. <clears throat> and I'm currently trying to move into a realm of metabolic excellency. So right now my TDEE is like 2150 probably. That includes all of my, I do over 100 miles of cycling a week, so I do eight hours of intervals a week, and I do three really heavy weightlifting sessions a week. And still my TDEE, by the calculator sense, is 2150. And I've been running some personal experiments to try and increase that. So I did one where I took methyl in blue for two weeks, and I made a video about that and why I stopped early. Actually, it gave me some pretty weird depressive or like apathetic to life symptoms. And one of the other things I want to test was MOTC. Now, what I need to add some context here. MOTC is an experimental peptide. It's not you know, classified for human use, use. It's a research peptide. Fundamentally, it is supposed to increase your metabolism and the way that you dispose of glucose or use glucose and then also the way that you burn fat. It is not really marketed as a weight loss drug, so that wasn't really my concern. I really just wanted to eat enough and keep overeating so that it would support you know, moving my total metabolism upwards. It is typically done via injection, and I'm deadly afraid of needles. It's been an issue of my life forever. Immunizations, anything, can't stand it. Although I've gotten a little bit better. Last year, I, I had blood, proper blood tests run six different times, so I gave so much blood through those big needles, and I can somewhat deal with it. Anyway, the idea of me reconstituting some peptide at home and then injecting myself with it is not one that I can entertain and also just not one that I can bring myself to do. It's like not for me. But I did discover that you can get some of these peptides in nasal sprays, which is what you would have seen at the beginning of this video. You can spray up your nose with it. And there's some really interesting science on being able to absorb quite a lot of peptide through your nasal cavity into your bloodstream. So I thought I would try it out. Now, I'm also pretty frugal, so I just get, ended up going for what I could find was like the best deal on the internet, which might be the main factor here. And I took it for every day for the last pretty much 30 days. So I've taken it every day since May 13. And I've gone between seven sprays up my nose to 10 sprays up my nose every single day. Now, pretty much every single day since I've taken it, my exercise hasn't changed, but I have exercised every day. So I cycle Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I do an hour. Friday, I don't because I squat. Saturday, I'll do an hour and Sundays, I'll do two hours. And then I will lift Monday, Wednesday, Friday as well. And here's what I found. As far as I can tell, nothing. So I have three fours. Either I bought like fake MOTC, didn't do anything. One. Two, nasal sprays is the reason why they're not popularized. It just doesn't work for humans. Or three, MOTC doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Now, the funny thing is, one of the reasons of me running these experiments is based on enough research and user stories that you're like, I've got to try this. I really am trying to heal my metabolism. And I, th I think that the longer you can stay at a higher metabolic rate, even if it's artificial, the longer that your cells will turn over and learn that, like, that is the metabolic rate that you need and that's the speed at which they could use fuel. And so even if it's artificially improving my metabolic rate temporarily, on the whole, I do think that is a net positive experience. Right now, the only thing I'm finding that is really moving my metabolism upwards is fundamentally eating a lot more carbohydrates, a lot less fat, and overeating. So I have been overeating since the end of February, and based on different scans, I've gained, uh, I've gained about 10 pounds. I think about five pounds of that is muscle, but I'm not entirely sure. It actually could be more based on a scan I did this week. It suggested that about four pounds of that was just muscle glycogen alone. And then there was an additional four or five pounds of muscle. And so I have actually not gained that much fat, but we'll see. I, I really, it's hard to tell with these different scans. They all don't agree. But yeah, what did I find with Motsi? Um, well, fundamentally, I'm spraying up my nose. So I sneezed a whole lot. I have had a lot of like random itching. I've actually, it's now pollen season and I have really bad pollen allergies this year. So... I have had issues with my nose generally being blocked up. Now, I don't know if that actually was driven by the MOTC because I definitely wasn't having allergic issues a month ago, although it's literally just turned in, in Denver, Colorado, where I am. But on the whole, I'm finding in, the nasal MOTC is not a good idea for anybody. I don't think it's worth it. I think MOTC is actually pretty expensive. And so when I do put two and two together, it doesn't quite make sense that I bought it at the price I did. 
I probably should repeat this experiment with a much more expensive version from a much more reputable peptide seller or lab. One of the things that drives me insane is that there aren't many user stories or people's experiences of using different peptides on YouTube or in video form. Even the Reddit posts aren't that great. The main videos are people selling their peptide affiliate codes or whatever, which I just think is very hard to basically make that a reasonable thing to do. And so, yeah, I can tell you I got mine from a brand I can't remember, but I'll put the picture on screen. And they, I think they did a buy one, get three free, free, get buy one, get three free deal, which when you put together, you're like, does it really make sense at any of these prices? On the flip side, I do know that the prices at which sellers in the US sell peptides is at about a 1000% markup to the actual base price that it is imported from China or from around the world. And so it's reasonable to me that someone would try and go and sell on volume. Like I totally see that every rookie entrepreneur tries to do that. So it could be, it could be a real, could be a real one. I think I'm going to, there is another peptide that I found that you take orally. You just take the, you just take the pill and it functions in an interesting way. It does increase your metabolism. It does do that partially through glucuronidation and some other steps. It does increase fatty acid oxidation, which isn't really something I try to do in general. So I'm not sure how that one's going to go or when I'm going to do it. That is pretty expensive. So I'm going to gonna hold off on that experiment. But yeah, my whole MOTC adventure didn't work out so well. I do think that if you have a aggressively suppressed metabolism and you want to increase it, it's going to take a long time, especially if you did the damage over a long time. I've definitely done the damage over between five to 15 years, more aggressively in the last five years since I've been way leaner. On the whole, like I'm glad I'm lean, but also, you know, I'm regularly eating 2000 calories in a day and that is just not enough food for an actual adult man. And it's not enough food for an adult man who cycles semi-competitively and lifts like really heavy. So trying to fix that i do think then there's room for people to play with these kind of experimental peptides that seemingly have very little downside or at least to, to test with them you really can't go too wrong if you do a little test to improve your metabolism because whilst it took me 15 years to get here i don't really want to spend five getting my metabolism back up i'm 36 in a couple months time that takes me to 40 to have the metabolism but really like who knows what happens in that time i would like to get back to a healthy metabolism as soon as possible, as should anybody. I think when you are trying to repair this, having done it for such a long time, the need to do it faster is quite important. I should be eating probably 4,000 calories a day to closer to maybe 4,500 calories a day with how much activity I do. And I just think about all of the things in my life that don't work or all the things in my body that don't work on such an efficient metabolic rate which concerns me really if I was to get super sick or you know, something else was to come along, which really is where that there is the kicker, right? When you have suppressed your metabolism, your body turns off a whole bunch of other systems, including your immune system, or at least it ramps down your immune system. I'm also dealing with, I didn't cover this, I don't know if I covered this in another video, but I'm also dealing with adrenal fatigue, late stage adrenal fatigue. And I just know, you know, even if without the adrenal fatigue, if you remove that from the picture, if I could burn twice as much energy in a day, I would have way more energy and that as with as a late stage adrenal fatigue person not having any energy is a real issue for me on the weekends during the week it's it's not which is a crazy piece of that puzzle as a father as a husband 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 and dad written on my shirt i would love to have double the energy my kids are wonderful beings and they're so much fun to be around and I want them to remember me as somebody that was fun and there and active and involved rather than somebody that just worked all the time and then was exhausted, which I know that I know that feeling. So that's my MOTC review. I think everybody should somehow maybe try it out if they're into it. I think the only real effective way for me to do it if I was going to redo this experiment is to inject myself and I'm just not there yet. So I'm going to stay away from that one. Stay away from the nasal peptides. Don't work is my general conclusion based on the three variations that I ran through. And until next time, hope you have a great day. At Patchwork, we work with people to help them achieve metabolic excellence. Fundamentally, that's really taking a look at where you are and your diet history and how you're feeling, your symptoms, that kind of stuff. And then digging down into the root causes of what is blocking your metabolism such that you are gaining weight or you are resistant to losing weight or you are consistently 
regaining any weight that you've lost, right? Calorie counting doesn't work. Fasting doesn't work. Carnival doesn't work anymore. Why? We do that a number of ways. We do it through genetic testing. We do it through organic acid testing. But newly released, we also do that through some AI coaching. So I want to give you a quick preview of our AI metabolic coach. If you head to coach.patchworkfood.com, this is available right now, live, free to use. Have at it. So I just tag my answers there together. Then going to ask me if I want to do a deep dive or go quick. Let's go deep dive. It's going to ask me what my TDE is. We just looked on screens. We think it's about 2150. I think I'm being a bit aggressive, but 2150. Lean body mass, I'm at 20%. Okay, so based on 20%, how much I'm doing there. Da, 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 da. Do I do any exercise? This is going to flag if I'm in a low energy availability state, which I definitely am. I've suppressed my metabolism so aggressively, and I think most people don't realize that you actually shouldn't just be able to infinitely restrict calories. The average man should be eating well over 3,000 calories a day. So I'll just do one last answer here. So it's guessing there that my metabolism is pulling out about 15.36 calories per pound of lean body mass. And that would put me in a low energy availability state. I will flag here. People are always like, oh, your metabolism's low. You need to gain muscle. If I gain muscle, that won't change the 15 calories per pound number. Because that, that's changing the pound number and the calories number. Fundamentally, right, as an actual person, you should be able to pull more energy out of your body than I currently am. I'll pause right there. But if you get a chance, definitely take a look. I'm sure it will help a lot of people out.